Hello and welcome students. This is our last lecture for the chapter Coplanar Concurrent Forces. In this lecture number 10, we are going to discuss system of forces. And then after we will discuss two more theories, which is principle of transmissibility and principle of superposition. So now let us start this topic, system of forces. After completing these three theories, this chapter is going to complete now, as I have said in the last lecture. So now, what is system of forces first? When two or more forces act on a body, they are called to form a system of forces. Means, if one, if two, if three or more than two forces, any of forces, any number of forces are acting on the body, then comprisely they are forming a system of body. Following system of forces are important. Following system of forces means there are certain type of system of forces, 6 to 7 system of forces, which is very important from the subject point of view. You can see in the figure as well, and you can see the first system of forces, which is coplanar forces. What is the definition of coplanar forces? The forces whose line of action lie on the same plane are known as coplanar forces. So, this is the plane. Okay, this is the plane in which force P1, force P2 and the force P3, all the forces are lying in the single plane. So, line of action of all three forces are lying in the single plane, then they are known as coplanar forces. Here you can see forces P1, P2, P3 are coplanar forces. Co means same and planar means along the plane. So, it is final that co means same and planar means along the same plane. So this is the system of forces. Let us discuss some more system of forces similar to this. Number two, here you can see concurrent forces. The forces which meet at one point are known as concurrent forces. So P1, P2, P3 are concurrent forces. You can see in this figure, P1, P2 and P3 all are compressive forces and meeting at a single point. So this type of forces are known as concurrent forces. Let us see third system of forces which is collinear forces. You can see in this figure at this point, at this point or you can see along the straight line there are number of forces. First one is P1, second one is P2 and third one is P3. So the forces whose lines of action lie on the same line are known as collinear forces. So P1, P2, P3, all the forces lying in the same line, so they are known as collinear forces. Okay. So now let us check one more. Number four, which is coplanar concurrent forces, means combination of first and second. Here you can see this is the plane number one, rectangular plane in which three forces are lying, P1, P2 and P3. So they are coplanar forces first. But these three forces are also concurrent because they are intersecting at a common point. So at this point, you can see that P1, P2 and P3 all are intersecting. So P1, P2, P3 are coplanar concurrent forces. So this is the system of forces. Let us see some more. Number five, coplanar non-concurrent forces. It means the plane will be same, but the forces are not intersecting at common point, so they are known as non-concurrent forces. You can see the definition. The forces whose lines of action lie on the same plane, but they do not meet at one point, are known as coplanar non-concurrent forces. So you can see this is the rectangular plane. Okay, this is the rectangular plane having side A and B, suppose, in which at four corners. Four forces are acting P1, P2, P3 and P4. So this type of forces are not intersecting at a common point. So then they are known as coplanar non-concurrent forces. So this is the system number 5. Now this is system number 6. Here you can see there is a cube and at the corner of the cube from three different planes three forces are coming. First one is P1, second one is P2 and third one is P3. So three forces are coming from different planes but they are concurrent at the corner of the block. So, they are known as non-coplanar concurrent forces. So, the forces whose lines of action 
do not lie on the same plane, but they meet at one point are called non coplanar concurrent forces. So, this is very clear from the figure itself. Let us see number 7 non coplanar, non concurrent forces. You can see in this cube there are three forces P1, P2, and P3, but they are not intersecting at any corner, they are resting in all different planes. So, the forces you can see in the definition there. The forces whose line of action do not lie on the same plane and they do not meet at one point are known as non coplanar, non concurrent forces. So, these are the system of forces in which different types of forces are acting. Let us see this theory number 2 for today's lecture principle of superposition of forces. Let us first see the statement and then the statement can be understood from the figure itself. It states if two equal, two equal, opposite and collinear forces, which type of forces? Two equal means having same value 50 Newton, 100 Newton, etc. 50, 50, 100, 100. Opposite means left and right tensile and compressive. They are known as opposite nature of forces. And collinear means lying in the same line are added to or removed from the system of forces. Then there will be no change in the system and position of the body. Means this type of similar and opposite forces are added or removed from the system. Then the system is not affected with this procedure by adding or removing the forces. So this type of system is not changing. This type of principle is known as principle of superposition. So position of the body will remain as it is. Suppose you can see P1 equal to 100 Newton acting at A. You can see in this figure at point A. P1 equal to 100 Newton acting. If two equal and opposite collinear forces P2 equal to P3 equal to 150 Newton are added, you can see this is the case number 1 for the body AB. In the same body AB, you can see now the 100 Newton force will remain as it is P1, but there are two forces P2 equal to 150 Newton and P3 equal to 150 Newton. Both are having same value but having opposite nature are acting like this. So, these forces are known as opposite forces, but they are not affecting the system itself. So, this type of principle is known as principle of superposition. Let us discuss one more theory. This is principle of superposition, which is very easy topic. Let us discuss one more theory. This is the principle of transmissibility of forces. Let us first see the statement. It states if a force act at any point on a rigid body. You can see this is the rigid body of block AB and the force P is acting at point A. It may also be considered to act at any other point. So, it means what? This force P is acting at point A, but you can consider that it is also acting at point B also. Okay, because the direction of the force will remain same, right side. So, in this case, in the case number 1, the block is going towards right direction, while in this case, this case number 2, the body is again and again moving in the same direction. So, there is no effect or no change in effect. So, push type force P resulting into forward motion of the block, while in this case, pull type of force P resulting into forward motion of the block. So, in the first case, the force is push type, in the second case, the force is pull type, but they are resulting in the same motion. So, point on its line of action provided the point is rigidly connected with the body. So, what is the required condition? A and B, both the points or any other third point on which the forces are applicable, they all the forces, all the points are rigidly connected with the particular body. Now, let us see some description also. According to this law, a force acting on a rigid body can be shifted along its line of action. So, you can see the force P is shifted along this line at point B. Okay. A push force can be converted into pull force. So, nature of the force can be changed. This principle is valid for rigid body only. By shifting the force, only the state of the body remains same, but the internal stresses are definitely changed. Internal stresses. What is internal stresses? We will discuss it in two upcoming lectures. What is internal stresses and what is the strain subjected to the body? Okay, so students, 
now this lecture is going to close now three theories which are left in this chapter are completed right now so our chapter coke turner concurrent forces is ending over here just revise this lecture again and again just revise lecture number 1 to 10 again and again so this is your first chapter this chapter is having weightage 7 to 14 marks in gtu numericals gtu exams okay so 14 marks is very very much important and i want to tell you one thing that this chapter is also important for the one more chapter the name of the chapter is co-planner non-concurrent forces non-concurrent forces we will discuss it into the next videos upcoming videos but till then this chapter is very important for to understand that upcoming chapter okay so just revise this chapter ask for any doubts and be prepared for any of the confusions any of the clarity and any of the exams so till then goodbye students thank you very much just revise this chapter again and again this is the conclusion